Hopefully you got your Snickers, right? <laughs> Everything. Okay. Are we ready? Thank you for coming tonight. Hopefully everyone's had a blessed week. Hopefully you triumph over everything that you went through, that you're going through, or that may be coming your way. I always tell you that uh, he didn't give the victory. He didn't need the victory for himself. But you needed the victory, so he gave the victory to you. But what you do with the victory, it depends on you. It depends on you, but you have the victory. All right. Now we're at part uh, 17, really. <laughs> Still talking about the word is nomadic, uh, traveling, all right? Uh, so we're going to go all kind of ways today, and I think that some of the things that you can learn as we go, I don't like to just tell a short story, but I like to go around here and down and all right. through the, <laughs> right? Because it's actually Bible study, right? So it's like, it's class, right? right? So if the teacher can't teach, take his time or her time to teach, then what's the use of coming, mm -hmm. all right? So, okay, now, Josh said I left off on a cliffhanger <laughs> last week, and uh, I may have done that on purpose or whatnot, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start that whole little part over. We, we kind of eased into it a little bit, but I'm just going to start all that little part over, right? So, um, let's talk about the word God speaks travels with no hindrances, I mean hindrances. It overrides all spiritual traffic laws. All right now, I'm going to read what I read to you last time. Be worded a little different. And it goes, when travel arrangements are carried out in the physical world, one usually travels by car, airplane, or ship, depending on their final, de final destination. With that being said, there are sometimes traffic delays that consist of wrecks, Road work, road closures, and traffic jams. I'm sure we can all attest to that. Mm -hmm. In addition, sometimes our travel is somewhat hindered by, hindered by traffic lights, which includes, I mean, traffic laws, which include speed limits, stop signs, yield signs, and traffic lights. But in the realm of the spirit, none of these laws should ever hinder the word from traveling to its destination because the word has the power and authority to override all of these spiritual traffic laws of hindrance when his word is traveling. Notice I said his word, because I'm talking about God's word. We'll get to the point where I'll tell you that God has put a restriction. He's, he has made a law concerning his word. And it's a Bible verse that you're very familiar with. But we must mature. We must speak to the level that God speaks. Let me explain. God only speaks one way. He speaks consistently. Upward and forward. He never takes back his confession. Sometimes as Christians, we are tricked into taking back our confession, which we'll get into yep. that spiritual entrapment, I call it. But we're tricked into taking back our confession. But what you confess, you confess and you stand on it. Even if it doesn't seem like it's coming to pass, you stand on it. I say again, we must mature to the level of what God speaks. His word is never hindered. It cannot be hindered. All word that, the words that we speak are supposed to take on the same effect as God's. But sometimes they don't. Once again, we must mature. We must come to the level. We must rise to the level and speak how God speaks. I say again, he never says anything inconsistent. Never. That's just like, if God has, he's given you a life, of course, all right? But he has a will that he wants you to carry out in the earth. And once you understand that will or that mold for your life, you have to speak things in a consistent direction with that mold that is fitted for your life. Mm -hmm. You never speak against it. But we must mature to that level. Oh, you're still there. Mm -hmm. All right, let me go on. I don't want to bore you here. Now. Oh, boy. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. And I think we'll go here probably two or three times or so. Just say amen when you get there. Amen. <laughs> amen. Now, I call this the spiritual forces have put spiritual laws of hindrance in place through their established 
custom system in the air. All right? Now, let me read. I'm going to read from the Amplified here. It says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents. It says, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the uh, world forces of this present darkness. It says, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly supernatural places. So, a customs. We know what a custom, what customs are, right? Uh, custom systems are. They have customs in the airport uh, on uh, when ships come in and things of that nature, right? Well, they set up a demonic one in the air. In the air. Now, think about hindrances. Hindrances. If you think about it, maybe you have ordered something before, right? Or maybe you've ordered something and it's coming from another country. And it has to come here. It has to pass through customs. Sometimes it's held up in customs. Yeah. And you don't receive your package, all right? There's a hindrance there. This is the same thing that these supernatural forces have set up in the air. That's what we must understand. Think about it. Where do your blessings come from? They come upward, downward. Why? Because they want to descend on the earth. And that's why he set up a kingdom right here in the air with these spiritual powers, this custom system that hinders. It tries to hinder our blessings, tries to hinder our speech and all those things in type of nature. Right there in the air. It's a spiritual customs system. Are you still with me here? All right. Let me go on here. Now, since this custom system is supernatural, it makes it difficult for many Christians to deal with. Why? Because too many Christians spend too much time functioning from what? The realm, not the realm of the spirit, but the realm of the flesh. Come on. Now, maybe you can contact somebody with a physical customs. Maybe you can get some type of answers. Well, your package is here. This is here. But what about your blessings? When you, who are you going to contact? Satan? Why? Because he's the leader of this camp. In this custom system. So it's difficult for Christians because they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do when something is hindered. They don't know what to do when their speech is hindered. But Satan is really not hindering your speech. You're giving permission to hinder your speech by you taking back your confession. Mm. Which we'll get to later. Or you're following me so far. But can you see it's a spiritual custom system. It comes through the air. He set it up there for a reason. Many Christians, I say again, they don't know what to do. They're having trouble. They're wondering why this is not occurring, why this is not going forth, why this is not happening. Why? Because something may be hindered. It may not have past customs. Oh, you're still there. Oh, boy. I'm trying to get excited here. Good. Now, let's understand these hindrances, all right? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Amen. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I need to take you too fast. Let's expound on what I said a little bit here. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Are we together? Is everybody with me so far? Amen. Are we at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20? Amen. Oh, okay. It says, Now unto him that is able to what do exceedingly uh, I mean, exceeding abundantly above all that we can, that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Now, we've been here before. Now, he says, according to the power. He says, I'm able to do above and beyond. I told you before, that means God is saying, put your order in with me. Put your order in with me. He says, whatever you can order, I can fulfill. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. He says, whatever you need, whatever you desire, whatever you want, he says, put your order in with me. Think about it. If we go to a restaurant, no matter whether we get carry out, whether it's delivery or where we're dining in, sometimes we order our food, all right? The request has been put in. But sometimes there's a delay of us receiving our food. Why? Because there's some type of hindrance. Do you understand? Maybe they're busy. Maybe something is going on in the kitchen. Maybe your waiter or waitress is busy. But there's a hindrance. But it does not mean that your order has not been granted. All right. Are you with me? Same with God. It does not mean that your order, that your request has not been granted. Yeah. But sometimes it gets caught because it has not passed through customs. Wow. Oh, dear Lord. Wow. Oh, you're still there? Yeah. Am I making sense? Oh, boy, I better go on here. Oh, dear Lord. Customs. 
it gets hindered. We get confused because we don't know what's occurring, what's happening. Where is it? I spoke that months ago. I spoke that years ago. But my question is, did you take back your confession? Do you ever remember taking back your confession? Remember, yes, our words travel. God, that's the law. His words he cannot be hindered in any kind of way. But what about yours? Yours are supposed to be the same words that God speaks, but yet you speak something differently. Or well, you're still there. All right, let me, let me go on here. Now, let's look at a definition of customs here, right? Dictionary version here. It says the official department that administers and collects the duties levied by a government on imported goods. Imported goods. Now, a question. Where are you from? If you are born again, where are you from? Where are you from? I told you before, you're from another country. Heaven is another country. It has its own government. It has its own constitution. I've told you before. So that means if you are born again, that means that your names are written in heaven. That means that's where you are from now. But you're just having an earthly experience. Mm -hmm. So when we receive a blessing, do you understand? Whenever we receive a blessing, it is considered as an imported good. Why? Because it comes from another country. Mm. Oh, you're still there. Oh, dear Lord. Can you see it? It comes from another country. But you have a custom system that is in the air. We call him with the power of the prince of the air. We also call him the god of this world. He's very busy. Oh, dear. Can you see that? All right, let me give you another definition. I'll just start. I'll throw that in there for free. Definition number two. It says a place at a port or airport, which we're more familiar with, or frontier where officials check incoming goods, travelers, a luggage. Think about it. If you have something illegal on you, so let me put it this way. That custom system is there for a reason. It's there for a reason. If you have some illegal contraband on you, somehow, what would they do? They would hold you in custody. Why? To confiscate what is on the person. That's the same thing that saves you, the blessing that is upon you. He wants to withhold you and confiscate it for you, from you. Do you understand? He wants to take it from you. And that's his job. And that's his job. Oh, you're still there. You're quiet on me here. Oh, boy. I just, I better go on here. Can you see that, though? Does it make sense? Does it all tie in together? He wants you. And in fact, he wants you, he wants your, your, your belongings to come through his airport. He wants to confiscate it. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Let's look at an example of that that I mentioned last time. Example of the spiritual law of hindrance at work in the air. Daniel chapter 10, verses 11 through 14. Well, I got another hour here. Say amen when you get there. I need to get this right today. Daniel chapter 10, verses 11 through 14. Daniel chapter 10, verses 11 through 14. Just say amen when you get there. Amen. All right. There you go. Give me a strong one. There you go. Pick up my reading. Verse 11. It says, And he said unto me, Daniel talking, he said, Oh, Daniel, a man greatly beloved. He says, Understand the words that I speak unto thee. And stand upright. He says, for unto thee I am now sent. He says, and when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. trembling. He says, then, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. I mean, before thy God, thy words were heard. Daniel was petitioning him, all right? 
He says, thy words were heard. He says, and I am come for thy words. I am come to respond to thy words. All right? And it says here, it says, but the prince, it says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and 21 days. He says, but lo, Michael, one of the chief priests, I mean, princes, come to help me. And he says, and I remain there with the kings of Persia. He says, now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. There's a hindrance. A hindrance. He was trying to stop the answer from Daniel's prayer from coming to him. Do you understand that? He says, I would stood the, the, the king of Persia. Anytime that you see, you, you must understand in the Old Testament that there's always the idea of a double kingdom. Meaning, every time there's a kingdom that's set up a physical kingdom, they're really not the ones that's running the kingdom. It is forces behind them that you cannot see that's truly running the kingdom. What are you saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> you see? So that's what we must understand. So when he says I was with the prince of Persia, he's not talking about a physical prince. He's talking about something deeper than that. But my thing is here, if, if he tried to hinder, hinder Daniel's prayer, why wouldn't he try to hinder your blessings? Why wouldn't he try to hinder the word that you speak? Why wouldn't he try to take it and confiscate it from you? That's an example, a biblical example of these spiritual forces that are at work in the custom system of the air. Can you see that? I ask you again, why? Why wouldn't he? If he tried to hinder, hinder Daniel's prayer, his answer, why? Why would he do yours? And that's why I say, it. it's not that it has not been granted. Right? Because the Bible says when we pray to him, he what he hears us. Meaning he hears us to respond. Do you understand here? He says anything. If you pray my anything I'll do, I'll do for you. Representing all that I am. I don't know about you, but anything means everything under the sun. Without the exception of nothing. It means all. Oh, you're still there. Amen. Oh boy, you're making me work here. <laughs> Does that make sense? Hmm. So, in a sense, these spiritual forces are setting up roadblocks to try to capture your blessings, capture your word that you have spoken, and things of that nature. Just as a cop set up roadblocks to apprehend what? A fugitive. Make sense? All right, let me go on here. Now, Let's look at the law of no hindrance that God has established concerning his word. Isaiah 55, verses 10 through 11. The law of no hindrance. Remember when I started off, I said God, his word cannot be hindered. I said we must speak to the level of God's speech. We must mature to get to that level. Right? Now, this is a law right here. This is a law. Once God says something, it becomes a law. That's why God has to be very careful what he says because it becomes a law. Even when a king says something in the Old Testament, it becomes a law. It becomes a law. God is the king of what? Kings. So whenever he says something, it becomes a law. Are you still there? All right. Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. It says, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, it says, And returneth and not thither. It says, but watereth the earth. And it says, and make it bring, bring forth and bud. It says, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the ear. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not, it shall not, it shall not Amen. return to me void. It says, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And, and, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. Now he gives us an analogy about the rain, all right, and the snow. He says it comes down, but it comes down for a purpose. He says it comes down to water the crops, if you will, right, so that the, uh, the one who planted the crops so it can grow, so he can provide food to the eater or to us or however, right? So now, think about it. That's a beautiful analogy. He says, so does my word follow the same path. 
It says, in other words, my word does not have a boomerang effect. Let me explain. Right? We know that a boomerang, what? you can throw it out, right? It's gonna come and right it's coming right back to you. Uh -huh. Question. Did it accomplish a purpose? You sent it there and it came back with you, but it did not really accomplish an assignment. Some say you can use it in war and battle, but it did not come. If I throw a boomerang right here and it comes back to me, yeah, it came back, but it did not complete an assignment. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So it basically returned back to me void. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Without a purpose. Let me go on here. He says, it shall not return unto me void. What does that mean? That gives me an idea. What if you send a teenager to the store with a grocery list? All right? Follow with me now here. You know where I'm going. If you send a teen to the grocery store with a list. Now, if that teen got in the store and that teen has gotten everything that he or she wants and nothing that you need. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Now, once they come back and they have everything that they wanted and nothing that you need, wouldn't you have said that they have aborted their assignment? <laughs> they came back empty. They came back void. They came back empty-handed. So they voided their assignment. He says, my law that I established about my word cannot take on that. It says it has to accomplish something. If I send it to a place, it will do that thing. It will do that thing. I always say it. I'll say it again because I love using it. What about Christ? He was the word that became flesh. That's what we must understand. He could not return to the Father void. He had to accomplish his mission. Why? Before he becomes seated at the right hand of the Father where he rightfully was. He had to finish. And he says, my law, my law concerning my word. It cannot, it cannot, it cannot come back to me void. Oh, you're still there. Amen. Like you're making me work here. <laughs> work on, work on. You're quiet. <laughs> oh, boy. Shall I go on? Yes. Amen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, how, is the, how does that law work? I showed you the law. Why? God said it. It became law. His word, right? It's established. It cannot come back to him void. It travels without any hindrances. Nothing can stop it. No traffic lights. No stop signs. No yield signs in the realm of the spirit can stop him. No traffic jams. No wreck. Do you understand? No road construction. Nothing can stop his word as it travels in the realm of the spirit. How? How does that happen, though? How does that happen? Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. Can they can work? Work it, work it. Appreciate that, Josh. Uh -huh. I got you. Making me pull my chest out of here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. And I'm going to bless you from the amplifier here. Because I want you to hear it a little bit louder. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. Amen. There you go. That's strong right there. <laughs> okay. Reading from the Amplified. It says, Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am actively, actively watching over my word to fulfill it. Now, shall I explain what God gave me to share with you? He says, I'm actively watching over my word. Have you ever been in a funeral entourage? Where they leave the church, they go to the cemetery, and you get to pass through stop lights and stop signs? Freely? Now, there may be a cop in front of you, right? There may be a cop behind you, depending on how many cops it is. But that cop is actively watching over you. It allows you to travel without any hindrances. Amen. Well, you're with me. You're traveling. I'll say again. This is the fun part, not really, but you're running through stop signs. You're running through light. You're, you're in a scene, in a sense, it seems like you're in some type of parade, but you're traveling without any hindrances. That cop has the authority. That cop has the power. What? To allow you to do what you're doing, and at the same time, they're directing traffic to hold stop high, and they're protecting you. Amen. Oh, you're with me. Amen. God says, I am actively watching over my work. So God is the cop. Do you understand? He is actively watching over his word. His word is protected. And therefore, it cannot return to him void and it cannot be hindered because he's actively watching over his word. That's good. 
Oh, Are you with me? Amen. So it's traveling. Oh dear. Yeah, come on. It's oh. traveling. It's traveling at a high rate of speed. Do you understand here? See, God's word, it, it, it's, it's faster than a plane. Do you understand here? It's faster than a plane. It can get wherever it needs to get quickly. We become the hindrances with our mouths when yes, we speak we God's word. But it travels quickly. Amen. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. And just to reiterate it. So just as God watches over his word. The cop is watching over you actively here in the funeral entourage just as God is watching over his word. Now, once you speak it, he says, protect it. So I showed you the law and now I'll show you how you make sure the law is fulfilled. Why? Because the law is what? To protect you. So that law is to protect his word. Oh dear, I, know, I feel pretty good about that one. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen here. Yeah. Amen. amen. All right. Now, let's give an example of the word traveling with no hindrances. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 10, and we're going to read verse 13. Take your time. We've got another hour. Amen. There you go. You said Matthew chapter 8? Eight. 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 Yes. Verses 5 through 10. 5 through 10, and we're going to read verse 13. Okay. Yeah. You confuse me with that one. 5 through 10, verse 5. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 10, and we're going to read verse 13. Oh. Well, that's what I do when I'm in class. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just say amen when you do this. It's a good school guy right there. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, I'll pick up my reading, and it says, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, it says, There came unto him a centurion, beseeching or urging him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy. All right? He says, Grievously tormented. And Jesus said, un, saith unto him, I will come and heal him. I like the courage. Do, do, do you understand what he... He has no fear. It doesn't matter the condition. Whatever it is, he says, I'll come and heal him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Do you know what it is yeah. to carry that mentality? Yeah. No challenge. He says, know what the problem is. I don't care what it is. I'll come and heal him. Come on. Even though he knew it was palsy, but he says, I'll come and heal him. But that's the, that's the way that we ought to be. It doesn't matter the situation at hand. Amen. It doesn't matter how long the situation's been bad, I told you before. But it can come out of his grave clothes. I told you before, if Lazarus was dead four days and he decayed, he's stinking. He said, Master, he's stinking. Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. So it doesn't matter how some long, how long is something's there. How long did the lady have the issue of blood? It didn't matter. She tried position, but it didn't matter. That's what I'm telling you. Whatever your situation is, it doesn't matter how long it's been dead and stinking and decaying. Bring it back to life. Wow. Well, you're still there. Wow. I've, I've just stood out in there for free. I've said it before. But, but get that, all right? Now, he says, uh, okay. And the, 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 okay, and so he said, Lord, I am not worthy. I'm not, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. I like this part, though. He says, but well, speak the word on the word. He says, my servant shall be what? Healed. Oh, dear, get this. He says, For well, I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. To another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. And he said, Then to them that follow, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Oh, dear, I want to stop right there. I want to touch on something. Now, he says, I'm a man who's in command. I have soldiers under me. If I say go, he goes. If I say come, he cometh. He says, I know you are a man of authority, like I am, but to a higher degree. He says, if you just speak the word, it shall happen. He says, in other words, just like my soldiers are under my command, the word of God that you speak is a soldier under your command. Just speak it. Tell it to go, and it shall go. Tell it to come, and it shall come. He said, the word of God is a soldier under my command. Do you understand? The word of God is a soldier under your command. Speak it and tell it to go. Amen. It's a soldier. It has to perform. It performs in battle. Do you understand that? Oh, yes. Amen. 
See, when you really understand that, your life takes on a whole new meaning. Do you understand? You don't worry about the circumstances. Why? Because you can change the circumstances. How? By speaking the word. If you tell this soldier, go here. If you tell that soldier to go here. If you tell him to dig a, dig a box hole here, he'll do it. Why? Because he's under your command. That's what the word of God is for you. A soldier mm -hmm. under your command. Mm -hmm. Never forget that. A soldier under your command. It's prepared for battle. It's battle tested and it's battle ready. There's no battle that's too hard for the word of this soldier. Amen. Amen. Oh, dear Lord Jesus. Anyway, just thought I'd throw that for free. Now, Keep let me get back to it. Here. You like it. All right. It says, uh, where am I? Okay. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the same, I mean, in the self same hour. Right. Let me explain something to you here. He said he was healed in the same self hour. So that means. From the time that he spoke it, so when the centurion got to his people, Come on. he had to discuss. Huh? He spoke this at three o'clock. What time was he healed? At three o'clock. So he had to he had to discuss it. Even for Matthew, even to write about it. He said, Jesus said, as I speak it, it is done. He says, Go that way. So that means he spoke it as soon as he spoke it, it was done. And that means that the world traveled from that location to the man without any hindrance. Can you see it? No hindrance whatsoever. It came from there and it went there. What is that equivalent to? That is equivalent if somebody says, hey, I'm coming to pick you up, Pastor Brazil, at 7 p.m. Be ready or be there or be square, whatever the case may be. But if they arrive at your house and it only, let's say it takes 10 minutes to get there. They say, well, it doesn't take that long to get there. Oh, you're following me so forth. So now they arrive at your house at 6.55 or 7 o'clock. That means that they have just traveled without any hindrances. Mm. Just as the word did. It made it at the exact time. At the exact time that Jesus spoke it. That guy was healed. Jesus' words bring life. Right. John 6 and 63. Are you with me? Amen. Can you see that? Life is so strong that it brings back the undead. Say again? Like when Jesus breathed, when, when Jesus did that, his words breathed life. He right. bring back the people that are not here. Right. Right. Just like your words have life. I can say you can't see them. I'm speaking and you hear me talking. Well, where the words go? Why? Because they have the same characteristics as the Spirit. You see the wind blowing? What do you say in John 3? Right? You see the wind blow? I mean, you, you hear the wind glisten and move. You see the leaves. But where's the wind? Can you locate it? Mm -hmm. Can you locate it? Why? Because it's immaterial, but it's life. We know that he breathed the breath into Adam. Nobody could see the breath, but there was life. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. So you got me started on something. <laughs> now, let me read this to you. His servant never heard the word coming or its arrival, but he was healed, which confirms that sometimes God's word isn't meant to be heard by man, but is only but it meant to be heard by the situations that is destined to minister and bring healing to. Nobody heard the word. The servant, anybody in the house or where he was, nobody heard the word coming, but it arrived. And I say again, that shows you or confirms that sometimes when God speaks a word, Jesus spoke the word, but it wasn't for man to hear. It was only for the situation. You remember I told you sometimes we minister to the man, but the word ministers to the situation. It ministered to the situation. It wasn't ministered to man. It was no need for man to hear the word. But the situation heard the word and had to respond to the stimulus of the word. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Let's confirm that. Let's go to Psalms chapter, Psalm chapter uh, 107 verse 20. 739. Keith, don't let me give you a spit path up here. <laughs> Why are you directing this to our clock? <laughs> we know you don't mean it. I sit tight. We got another for 35, 40 minutes. Are we together? Is it everything coming together making sense so far? Yeah. Okay. 
And I'm just going to read this just a confirmation. It actually goes hand in hand eight. with Matthew chapter, I mean, eight verse, chapter 8, verse 8. Oh, eight. Psalm 107, uh, verse 20. Amen. Can we read it from the Amplified Classic Version? It says, He sends forth His word and heals them and rescues them from the pit and destruction. And uh, in brackets, it also uh, mentions Matthew chapter 8, verse 8, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 4, and uh, 5. But just a confirmation. But he sends his word. I told you his word, is tra it travels. It travels. It travels. It lands at the airport, but it still has to make it to its final destination, just as when you travel. You travel by plane, you land at the airport, but you still have to make it to your final destination. The airport is not your final destination. But wherever you're going is your final destination. That's exactly what God's Word does. Amen. i never forget when I first kind of, well, it was a little after I started off in ministry, but I was gone out. I really need to get that fire back. But I had my little website going and things, and I was I was doing I was doing some good things. Glory to God, give Him all the glory. And I met the lady. Um, um, she left a message on my website that I had at the time, and uh, she asked me what happened to my son because she read my story, my testimony. She was reading a blog on WordPress that I had. So I explained to her what happened. She said, "That's the same thing my daughter is dealing with now." And you know what I said? Do you want me to heal her? <laughs> and so we did the Skype thing, and I ministered to her family, and uh, I ministered to the baby. And I will never forget, she started seizing right there. Seizing, seizing, seizure. And I spoke the word. Right. Spoke the word. Right? And I knew the demon had left. Now, her seizures had stopped. But somewhere along the lines in that household, that so-called family of faith, there was some hindrance. Mm. There was some unbelief. Mm. There was some inviting back in of the evil spirit. See, once you get rid of the evil spirit, you need to fill the baby or the child up with something of God. Amen. That's what we must understand. Amen. Amen. But somewhere along the lines, it came back. Mm -hmm. And I said, that wasn't, that, that's supposed to be impossible. And I told her, I said, there are certain things that you must do. I said, I can only bring you to the water, but I can't make you drink. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. You have to stand for your daughter on your own, too, at some point in time. Amen. But the moral of my story, they were in India, mm -hmm. and I'm in Texas. Yeah. But I spoke the word, <laughs> and it traveled, and it hit there. In All the way in India, yeah. Amen. Oh, you're still there. Yeah. Amen. Not talking about me. But I'm just showing you the power that the word. word travels. Oh, you're still there? Yes, sir. Amen. All right, I better go on here. Let's see where I want to go now. I want to talk about the word that one speaks is just as important to the name of, or source that it originates from. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. I'm always setting you up for something. You sure do. I'm always trying to set you up for the next thing. Numbers chapter 23. Amen. Verse Amen. I've never read this before. What about you? I've read it before. Me too. <laughs> All right. Are we there? Amen. Man. All right. It says, God is not man. Is not a man. It says that he should what? Lie. Lie. It says neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? Now, think about it. You ever heard the term, my word is my bond, right? Right. You used to hang a lot of, around a lot of New York cats when I was in the military. And they threw that slang around. That's all they said. My words, my boy, you know, you know, where, you know that, that was their. Now, I know it didn't originate from them, but that's the group of people.
you know, that I heard use, use it the most. But what are they really saying? If I give you my word, I am promised to fulfill it mm -hmm. and do what I say I was going to do. Amen. That's what word God is saying. My word is my bond. My word is my bond. If I say it, then I have to do it. Why? Because he is a man of his word. Now, what am I showing you? The word that he speaks is just not only important. But it came from him, right? So that word that he speaks or that a man speaks will always be associated with him. So what am I telling you? Not only is the word that one speaks important, but the name of the source that it comes from is also important. That name, that source. That name, I'm telling you name. Remember that, I'm telling you for a reason because we're about to get into some things. That name, not only the word that one speaks, but the name of the source that it comes from is also as equally as important. Give you an example. You know anything about stimulus checks? Just a little. Just a little bit about the stimulus checks. <laughs> I can't understand. What are you saying? The stimulus checks. Oh. oh. No. Stimulus checks. I haven't got mine yet, but okay. I've heard about it. <laughs> okay. Well, if the president says that another round is coming, and we're going to put it in the mail. Which president? Well, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but the thing is, if he says it, then he should be a man of his word. Or if it was a she, he should be a man of their word. But well, what am I saying? If they said it, then you expect him to come. Yes, yes. Why? Because his word is supposed to be his bond. Once again. But the source or the name that it came from is just as equally important as the word that was spoken. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. I'm taking my time here. Do you remember on the scene of Genesis? I've said this before. God, we know that God was there. We know that Jesus was there. And we know that the Holy Spirit was there because he was hovering. And we know that God says, let there be. Nobody really seems to see Jesus, but he was there. Why? Because when God spoke the word, which he spoke his son, because Jesus is the word that became flesh. So he was on the scene. Is Jesus as equally as important as the Holy Spirit and the Father? Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. yes. So can you see? So not only is the, the, the word that one speaks is important, but the source of the name oh, wow. that it comes from. Wow, yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. I think I... I took the hammer and I nailed that in pretty good there. All right. Now, why am I saying that? Because I want to talk to you about talk to you about the importance of the exaltation of a name. We're, we're starting to make a transition somewhere else. All right. Philippians chapter two, verses nine through eleven. I'm not going to even get to the part I want to get to. Philippians chapter two, verses nine through eleven. Amen. 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 Here are a couple of pages turning. I'll wait. Twelve more minutes. We'll see what we can accomplish. All right. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Pick up my reading. It says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. And it says, And given him a name which is above every name. It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth. This is in things under the earth. And that at every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now we see that God highly exalted him. And then it mentions that he gave him a name above every name. See, when God had highly exalted him, his name has no choice but to follow. It has to follow the same type, exact same type of exaltation. Can you see that? Right? Now, it gets into something. It starts talking about that he's given a name above every name. And then it says every tongue must confess. Everything must bow. Now we see the ability, the power, and the authority in that name. 
We see the power in that name. We see the authority in that name. Now, Jesus' name has been exalted. Your name has become exalted when you were born again. But, you must get to a point where demons in the spirit world of the air respect your name, which we'll get to in a minute. But your name is exalted. Your name is exalted when you're born again. But you must get to a point where demons fear your name. Oh, you're still there. All right, let me go on here. Now, you are responsible for exalting your name before the spiritual forces. Luke chapter 10, verses 16 through 20. Making a transition. I don't know if we'll get there today, but we'll make it. Luke what? Luke chapter 10, verses 16 through 20. I need to make sure I have that right. Amen. What happened? That's when your voice fades down when you give out. Uh, it must be I don't have the mic in the right place. I'm not talking into okay. it properly. Not being critical. Just no, no, no. I can't get it. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Luke chapter 10, verses 16 through 20. Amen. 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 We got it. All right. Now, he says, he that heareth, that's what you're reading? Uh -huh. You heareth me. And he that despises you despises me. And he that despises me despises him that sent me. Uh -huh. Now, if you really want to get into what he says, and he sent them out. He sent them out, and they returned, right? But he says, if, basically, you're a representative of me. He said, if they despise you, they despise me. He said, basically, if they reject you, they're rejecting me. Why? Because they were sent in his name. They were sent in his name. Now, stay with me here. He says, and the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Right? And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven, fall from heaven. He says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He says, not some, but he says all. He says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He says, now, withstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject to Unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In heaven. Yes, sir. Amen. All right? Yes. Now, they said demons are subject to us in your name. They're not talking about they went and casted out demons and they said, in the name of Jesus, come out. That's not what they're saying. That's what most Christians think. And we'll get into all that. But it means that they're a representative. They came in his name. See, a demon understands when you come in the name of Jesus. There's a difference in coming in the name of Jesus and speaking from the name of Jesus. I'll get to it in a minute. You are in him. The name of Jesus is a location. It's a location. And that's why two people can both use the name, in a, uh, use the name of Jesus and cast out a demon, and one will have results and another will not have results. He's saying something deeper than that. They're a representative of my name. They came in my name. I sent them on my behalf. It means that when they went and cast out demons and priests and whatever that, they came in the name of Jesus as a representative of him. When UPS comes to your house, they don't say come out in Jesus' name and get your package or come out in UPS' name and get your package. Why? Because you see on the uniform that they are a representative of, oh dear. If it's FedEx, if it's UPS, if it's USPS, you see that they come as a representative of who or who they work for, who they have been sent by. That's what it's saying with Jesus. It's different than that. Yes, Paul used it, and, uh, and we'll get into all that. I don't know if we have time today, but I'm trying to communicate to you, communicate to you something that is much deeper than that. He's not saying, say, in the name of Jesus, come out. I've worked it both ways. I said, come out, and it came out. I said, in the name of Jesus, and it's come out. I've seen people who did both and got no results. So he's saying something much deeper than that. 
It says you come as a representative of me in my name. It says your names are written in heaven. I told you your names have been exalted. But you are responsible for making the demons in the spiritual world of demonic activity fear you. How? Every time that you are faced with a challenge, every time you are faced with a demonic activity, every time you realize there is a spirit to be cast out, you have to put it into action or practice. And that's what they were doing. Those 70, they were beginning to exalt their name among demons. And that's why I told you before, it's not about just the words that are important, but it's the name or the source that the words come from or are tied to. Are you with me here? Hell dear, how much time I got? Hmm. Are you following me so far? Does it all make sense? Oh, let me go a little here. Oh, dear. Hmm. I think I've said it all. I'm just checking my notes here. I want you to get it all. I think I want you to get it all. But can you see that? You are responsible for exalting your name. Those demons knew that they were coming as a representative of Jesus. I say again, they were not necessarily coming in Jesus' name, but they came as a representative of him. When they came, it was as Jesus had came on the scene and done the work himself. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Let me go on. You're making me work here. Let me read this to you. Catch this, really catch this. Your names being registered in heaven confirms your citizenship of that country. And it also locates your earthly address in which the package or the blessing should be delivered to. Are you with me? Remember when we started off, I was talking about the spiritual forces. They have to come through customs. They have to come through customs. Customs have to have an address to release that package to. Oh, dear Lord Jesus. Now, that's why the name is so important. It says your earthly address in which the package or blessings should be delivered to. You are the address because the blessings are registered to come to you or your name. Now, you see why I say the name is so important? Now, you see why I was setting you up? Now, customs must have a name or address in which they must release the package or the blessing to. Sometimes it seems hindered. In other words, sometimes if you look at your, um, I wrote a lot of different stuff, I'm not going to lie to you. And I'm always looking at a tracking number. And sometimes it's, it was customs, it's clear customs of here, and clear customs of here. But sometimes it's hindered. But you must make sure, you're responsible for making sure that it clears customs in every way, in every area in the spiritual world. Not God, but you all. How? By your mouth. By your mouth. You need to make sure just as God's words travel, that your package or your blessing is traveling. It doesn't matter how you received your blessing, whether you petitioned God for it or whether you spoke something for it. Whether you spoke it for it. I told you before, long years ago, you are the prophet of your own life. When you speak anything inconsistent with God's mode for your life or, or plan for your life, then you become a false prophet. We must mature to that level and speak. As God speaks, so our word cannot be hindered. Oh boy, it's seven hour. I wish I could get more into it. Oh dear Lord Jesus. I guess I'll have to stop right there. I didn't even get to finish where I want to. But I'm trying to get to a point. We, we, we have, we have some, some more good information. All right. But the word travels, people. There's no matter. Shouldn't be no hindrance. We've seen God's love concerning his word. But you have to ask yourself, is my words that I speak traveling at the rate with the authority, with the power, with the ability as God's word is traveling? If not, then you need to go back to the drawing board and you need to see what it is exactly that you're doing wrong. That word is supposed to travel. That word is not supposed to be hindered. All right? 
We'll get into some more next week. Thank you for coming. Uh, maybe we say a quick prayer. Oh, dear Lord. Uh, let us bow. Our Father, we just thank you right now. Thank you so gracious. Thank you so kind. Thank you that you love us. When we didn't love ourselves, God. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for your gentle hug. Just for your warmth. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you that you made us inheritors of the blessing. Lord, we thank you right now, God. We thank you that we're blessed, Lord Jesus. We thank that every fire of our being is blessed. Lord, we thank you that wherever place we enter, we enter as a blessing, God. We thank you that we are life changers, Lord Jesus. We thank you that we are soldiers in your army. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for you being you. And we thank you for seeing the best in us when we don't see it in ourselves. In Jesus we say, amen. amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming.